Welcome to the Advanced Tech Podcast. We are finally doing video. Joining me today is Daniel Crook. He's CTO of Call for Code and Code and Response, a new program. Welcome, Daniel. Thanks for having me, Alexander. You bet. So if you could tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about your background. Sure. So as mentioned, I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Call for Code, which is a yearly competition that IBM um, puts on in partnership with David Clark Cause. The United Nations and the Linux Foundation, uh, and that's for generating new ideas each year. And then I'm also CTO of the IBM Code and Response Program, uh, which is something we partner with the Linux Foundation on as well to take those ideas and put them into action. So a dual role, um, but one is for helping folks generate ideas, and one is for actually supporting the ideas. Nice, very cool. Um, so a high level for our listeners not familiar to Call for Code, could you tell us a little bit about the program? Sure. So it's been around for about two years. We're just entering our third year. Uh, we did a competition um, through 2018 through 2019, focused on um, building solutions to natural disasters. So what can the world's 24 million developers do um, if we train them at uh, the real problems that have been identified by folks like the United Nations through their Sendai framework and the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. So that yearly competition had been focused on um, creating applications um, that become open source solutions that anybody can use um, to address natural disasters. Um, and this year we've kicked it off with a dual track theme, um, but it's the same competition, uh, bringing developers together and inspiring them not only through a cash prize, a $200,000 cash prize, but also um, winning a fancy award and award ceremony, um, but also getting mentorship, connections with investors, and support from IBM and the Linux Foundation to actually deploy those solutions uh, around the world. Very cool. Awesome. And just for our listeners and viewers, um, we actually interviewed Call for Code um, a while back about, if you go back to our advancedtechmedia.org page um, and look for the original episode, we talked to Dr. Angel Diaz, who's the original founder of the program and the first year winners um, who are Project OWL, and they have a really cool program called Cluster Deck, which is being deployed currently now in, in multiple situations. Um, and that's one of the things that really impressed me about the program, is it's not just a hackathon for ideas, it's a hackathon where projects are actually, actually built and deployed in the real world. And so building on that, um, I'd like to hear a little bit about what's new with the contest for this year. Sure. So we launched it actually a month ago in late February. Uh, the focus was on the largest challenge of our lifetimes, uh, which is climate change. So we launched with climate change um, and in partnership with the United Nations 75th anniversary and with 10 years left to go towards those 2030 sustainable development goals. So we wanted developers to take on issues around water sustainability, energy sustainability, and disaster resiliency. So we originally launched with that one track in the three sub themes. Mm -hmm. um, but what we just announced last Friday was that we were adding a new track to the, to the competition. And this is focused around social, business, economic ways to address the coronavirus, the, the COVID-19 pan, uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not about asking folks to create vaccines or do deep scientific research. It's about all those other things that society needs and could be enabled through technology to help them get through this. That's awesome. That's one of the things that um, I'm really hopeful about is the fact that, you know, large companies are coming together and really pulling their efforts and resources. And it's not just about being within that company ecosystem, but really open sourcing that. And to me, that's really the, the power of open source is if you have a great idea, there's a way you can connect and a way you can deploy that rapidly. Exactly. That's always what set Call for Code as an idea, as a program from its beginnings apart, mm -hmm. was that um, there's lots of tech for good hackathons that generate great ideas and enthusiasm, but what they really need is ongoing support afterwards. So what makes them real? So from day one, that was the goal. And after the first year's winner, Project Owl, we created a program of a formal structure called Code and Response to take mm -hmm. those ideas and ensure that they're not only open source for everybody to use, um, but also that people get engaged, they know how they can use the IP, and how the winners can actually form commercial entities around those projects so that they remain sustainable. Um, so it's very important, uh, especially with open source, you're not just throwing something up on GitHub and you know just leaving it there. What you wanna do is build that sustainability, that support around the community, so that people take that and they merge it with some other great ideas and it really takes on a life of its own around the world beyond its original um, competition winning 
instance. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, so what's new with the contest in its, its third year this year? Uh, so in addition to adding the new track, the COVID-19 track, um, we, we have also the climate change track. What we're going to be doing slightly differently because we don't quite know the time frame, obviously, of this pandemic, mm -hmm. is if you compare the competition to last year or the year before, we had a multi-month competition ending in the summer. It went through a judging process, and then they won the award in October. And then they got a deployment of a team of about eight IBMers to go help them take the idea forward uh, the following year, starting basically in January. So um, with this year, we do have the dual track. So the climate change track will still look for applications that we can do on that, um, that time frame. Mm -hmm. But as we get submissions in for the COVID-19 track, uh, we're immediately going to recognize and bubble those great ideas forward and see what we can do through the existing code response program to take those call for code ideas and deploy them. So even though we have a dual track this year and the same competition schedule uh, with COVID, we're gonna front load the first 60 days, really look at what people are submitting. Um, and in the past, most people do wait to the last week to submit their ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we've opened up for submissions. So as the ideas come in, we'll evaluate them and uh, we'll help those folks get those ideas deployed. So we opened up for submissions on Friday, and we've already seen a bunch of ideas come in, some very early stage, but there's definitely seeds of um, amazing ideas in there that we want to uh, encourage and nudge in the right direction or even unify a couple of you know similar ideas, right? So I think that's also a great strength of what we built together with the Call for Code ecosystem is that we can connect people with other people working on something similar, maybe an academic institution, maybe an insurance company, maybe a tele telecommunications company. Uh, just forming those connections, getting people the support they need is a huge part of what we try to do at Call for Code. That's awesome. So for people that um, want to get involved, how do they get involved? Um, so the main website is callforcode.org. Uh, and there they can find the official competition rules, the schedule, the judging criteria, the rules. Uh, they can also find frequently asked questions there. And um, if they're not developers or don't want to participate necessarily in the competition themselves, but just want to support, uh, there's also opportunities for sponsorships and um, uh, joining the ecosystem there. And actually kind of building on that point, um, develop, you, even to participate in Call for Code, you don't necessarily have to have a computer science and technology software development to create something amazing. And in fact, last year's winner, they were very successful, Prometeo, uh, because their team of five comprised of a firefighter, an EMT or a nurse, a technical project manager, a full stack, web develop, a full stack developer, and a data scientist. So coming together, they actually created a solution for wildfire firefighters um, by embedding their customer on the team to provide immediate feedback and focus them on solving the real problems that are being faced by firefighters. So cross-functional teams are a huge part of this. Um, if you can find some other folks in the community that complement your skill sets, you can really build an amazing application. That's very cool. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I really like about this competition is it's focused on real world results. And it's not, you know, it, it's not philosophizing around how we could help. It's, you know, how can we help and what do we do now to deploy this? And I think in, you know, with all the situations we're facing right now with the pandemic and the economy and everything else going on, um, I think that it's, you know, it's, it's an awesome endeavor and very much, uh, very much appreciate that, you know, IBM and Linux Foundation and all the other partners are, are involved in, in doing this. It's cool. Yeah, it's, it's an inspiring time to be a developer and to use those technology skills for good. Absolutely. Um, so a couple more questions about the, the contest. So now that we're all working virtually, um, how will how will this be? How will this impact uh, participants? Uh, well, Call for Code's always had a virtual aspect to it in that it's been a multi month competition. Uh, and in fact, Project Owl, the first year's winners, they never met each other in person until the award ceremony. Um, so virtual has been a major part of this. We have a Slack community. Uh, the folks can join, find teammates, ask for help from IBM mentors and others. And um, what we did in the past uh, was we would run a bunch of weekend 24-hour, 48-hour hackathons at universities through our partner AngelHack. Um, and those were great places for people to come up with the seed of an idea, 
um, validate it and during a hackathon and then use that and seed value, uh, you know, nurture it and then submit it for the competition down the road. So uh, we still plan to do uh, events like that, shorter term events, but it's all of course gonna be virtual. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we'll be announcing those. You can see them through callforcode.org or the, the, the IBM site for providing the technology resources. That'll have an announcement of when those webcasts are. You can sign up by registering for the competition to hear about that news. Um, but it's, it's all about um, learning about technology. They're all web resources learning about the scope of the competition, doing research, you can do it all um, through web browsers, um, using your laptop to build your solutions, and of course using Slack and other social media tools to find partners, find experts, validate ideas. Um, so that's definitely gonna stay core to the, the initial uh, value of the program. Cool, very cool. Um, so, are there, I mean, obviously there's a, an overarching uh, call to action, but is there a specific call to action uh, for developers for this program for this year? Um, so other than the two tracks, uh, it's really about understanding the issues that confront us in the world, understanding, doing the research, um, and making sure that, uh, that developers don't just come to, with their enthusiasm, just throw technology at a problem. Um, what we want to make sure they do is that they deeply understand an issue, uh, that people um, do the research, understand what has worked in the past, what might already exist that they can piggyback on or build on top of. That includes existing standards, existing APIs, other open source projects. Um, so we really want folks to take advantage of all that information, digest it, and uh, create applications. So, you know, IBM is, is kind of um, our position in this is we bring together the experts like the United Nations, the American Red Cross, a bunch of other organizations that are in the field dealing with humanitarian issues. And we um, offer our technology and we, we bring the two together so developers can effectively apply IBM and open source technology to those real problems. And uh, we want to ensure that developers are connected with the right folks. Um, just like our friends at the United Nations Disaster Risk Reduction Organization who are in Slack as well. Um, um, and just forming those connections, getting people focused on the real problems, using their enthusiasm in the right way and um, having an effect. Awesome. Um, another question around the, the program. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in the existing programs? And if you can't comment on it, that's fine. But uh, mm -hmm. if you can, it would be great to hear about it. And if you can't, I'd love to hear about, you know, programs, um, projects that you're looking for um, to join, like solutions. I don't know if that's kind of breaking hackathon rules, but um, <laughs> if you had a wish list of projects that you could see within the contest, what would those be? Yeah, we definitely, over the last couple of years, we've seen um, types of applications come in, certain um, types of um, using Internet of Things mesh networks like Project OWL did, um, creating bots uh, for providing communication, scaling information, sharing, uh, blockchain for donations. We've seen those type of applications in the context of natural disasters. They're still important for the current scope. Um, but in fact, one of the ways that we encourage developers to think about a problem is something we have called starter kits. So we created three of these starter kits in United Nation, at the United Nations in Geneva in, in February, um, which basically take a, gather up some information around, uh, for example, in the case of climate change, the water sustainability, the energy sustainability, and the disaster resilience ideas. Uh, we put folks in a room to think about how they might solve this question in partnership with these experts, and we put a starting point for developers. They know what problems are the most pressing in those areas, and we're doing the same now for COVID-19 as well. Again, not focused on the deep research or vaccine creation. Um, there's other efforts uh, focusing on that, but basically how somebody can use a bot for improving communication, crisis communication, collaborating with their community, and doing remote learning type of activities. How do they carry on those things? So uh, we want applications in those sub-themes, um, and there are starter kits for people to start to understand the problem and begin work on a solution. Um, but as long as it fits in one of the broad umbrellas, um, and it addresses the competition scopes. We love to see every idea that comes through. Um, and there's no real um, you know, level of doneness they need to have. Of course, we wanna have working solutions, um, but they're judged against four different criteria, some of which value innovation versus completeness. Um, so you'll score one well on one or the other if you come with a really 
crazy idea, uh, which may, you know, take some time to implement, but is actually a very effective way to approach the problem. So we definitely want to see those ideas. We want to be able to nurture the ones that come through and uh, ensure that they're coming from people who, who really feel that this is the right solution to the problem. Very cool. Um, so one more time, we'll put the, uh, all of the links in the, the show notes, but um, if people are looking to go to find out more about Call for Code, where do they go and how, what other channels can they find you? Sure. So the main place to go is callforcode.org. Uh, that will in turn link to our Slack community. And that also links to the registration form, which is handled through the IBM developer community. Um, and they'll find resources for using IBM technology and open source technology data sets, things like that, through the set of pages on the IBM developer site um, that they can use for their competition entry. Um, but callforcode.org has links to everything. Awesome. Cool. And then finally, um, we always close out the podcast this way, and I think we'll continue it for uh, as, you know, as we do this with the video. Um, do you have any questions or parting thoughts for our listeners and viewers? Um, well, I think it's, it's very it's an inspiring time to be a developer. I know this is stressful and there's there's lots of um, stuff going on but one of the best ways to make a difference and keep yourself distracted in many ways is to be creative um, think about how you would benefit from a technology solution think about how you would work in this brand new world and uh, think not only about the short-term solutions but also back to climate change what are the other things we can do to improve this world for future generations using the technology we have now or that you're going to create for the competition very inspiring awesome all right. Um, is there anything else you wanted to ask of our listeners or viewers or anything else you'd like to get across? Uh, anything as far as the, um, the current pandemic that's touching you personally or, or views you'd like to um, pass on? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, there's plenty of advice out there. All I can say is wash your hands and, um, <laughs> you know, stay curious. And uh, I really hope that we get some great ideas from your audience. So thank you so much for having this opportunity, Alexander. Absolutely. Pleasure having you on the show. Thanks, Thank Daniel. And um, yeah, hopefully there's many more, many more um, competitions. Cool. All right, I'm going to end the recording. Uh, let's see.